Alright, so today we are going to be having a look at the performance differences between using DLDSR or uh, native resolution. We'll be testing at 4K on an RTX 4070. That's paired with a 12700K CPU and that again is paired with DDR4 4000 MHz memory. I have all the metrics up in the left hand corner of each respective video. On the left we've got the native 4K and on the right we've got DLDSR. Uh, DLDSR was uh, captured on a 1440p monitor which I just use uh, DLDSR in the NVIDIA control panel to make it 4K. And uh, the native resolution is uh, just a native 4K 60Hz monitor that I connected. Now, interestingly enough, uh, DLDSR is actually performing slightly better than a native, although I would just uh, chalk that up to run to run variances as uh, it's pretty much within margin of error, right? But I did expect DLDSR to be slightly slower than a native, but I, I tested a few settings here. We'll be testing a few games, actually, some with ray tracing, some with frame, uh, frame generation, that kind of stuff, just to see what kind of effect it actually has on uh, the performance of the game when you use DLDSR. But here you can see performance was pretty much identical. All right, just in the previous video, uh, the GPU usage actually did drop on the DLDSR side, although it didn't really affect our frame rate at all. And uh, during this test, uh, spoiler alert, the GPU usage is pegged above 98% all the time. So why would you use a DLDSR? DLDSR basically upscales or renders internally at 4K, if you set it to 4K, for example, as I did here. And then it uses AI to downscale again to your monitor's native resolution. The only benefit you really get is just the uh, anti-aliasing. It looks slightly better than some native TAA implementations or FXAA implementations for example or even some games that don't have a native AA you can just use DLDSR just one thing to note is it's not turning your 1440p monitor into a 4k monitor it's not going to look like 4k it'll just look better on the anti-aliasing front right but over here you can see DLDSR once again edges slightly ahead with 61 frames per second average versus 61 frames per second average but the lows are slightly better with DLDSR enabled so then next up we've got a Spider-Man and now you can see that the native uh, resolution with the native 4K monitor is actually slightly better. I, I did see some peculiar anomalies with the DLDSR in Spider-Man Remastered. You'll see that actually now with the ray trace settings, you can see that the frame time graph on both actually, it's uh, pretty, <laughs> pretty unstable uh, to say the least, but the frame rate drops when using DLDSR is actually quite a lot. All right, and next up we've got uh, Ratchet and Clank. I had to think of the name quickly. Um, I'm trying to get the sync to it's actually pretty identical, the performance, once again, at 4K medium, we're looking at around 70 frames per second average. It does fall behind slightly using DLDSR, but the lows and the 1% the 0.1% lows are actually pretty close to each other here. It's just that the, the average frame rate is around three frames per second higher when using the native monitor. And I mean the native 4K monitor, obviously. Right, but we'll be testing ray tracing again. And now there's a very, very big difference. And I think it's because this game uses direct storage. Uh, the performance is, the performance differences are quite substantial here. We are struggling to hit 60 frames per second when using DLDSR in this specific scene. Whereas using the native 4K monitor, we are seeing an average of around 75 frames per second. The lows are also much better using a native than a DLDSR. And I found it quite strange as this is the only game that I tested that uh, exhibited this behavior. All right, so next up, we'll just have a look at Starfield. I know this is just going to be boring. I just uh, stood still for a while and then let the camera uh, turn around on its own and you can see performance at native getting around 50 frames per second uh, with native uh, 4k monitor or using DLDSR at 4k the performance is pretty much the same the 0.1% lows are slightly lower on the native monitor but once again that's just the uh, run to run variances I don't uh, I don't think we should uh, read too much into that now the reason why I test with DLSS and ray tracing and all that kind of stuff is because uh, DLDSR is also an AI based technology so it probably uses the tensor cause for that so enabling DLSS should affect the performance but as you can see uh, the performance is is pretty similar it's slightly lower using DLDSR once again when we enable DLSS uh, balanced and frame generation in Starfield but all in all not really much to say yeah all right uh, that's uh, that's going to be it for this video hope you guys enjoyed it if you did hit that like button hit that subscribe button and as always we hope to see you in the next one